Prof. Well, good morning, everybody yes. from uh, sunny Dongsan, where it's very, very warm here. And uh, welcome to the two guests I have who are both uh, long term China residents and owners of EVs, which is what today's show is all about. Not only that, both of these guys are extremely uh, vocal about China and uh, China's uh, <laughs> trend from whatever they uh, were to what they currently are today. So I think we're going to have a really interesting chat today. And for the first time in my life, I'm here talking to two people who are much more famous than me. <laughs> Not the first time at all. But welcome, <laughs> Lee Barrett, and welcome, Fernando Munoz. It, oh, for Man Hi, all. Is it Munoz Bernal, Fernando? Is it the whole uh, Munoz name? Bernal, yeah, Munoz Bernal. Hi, everybody. Okay. <laughs> Fernando Munoz Brunel and Lee Barrett, very simple name for me to remember. Welcome to Jerry's Take on China, which is a, a great show for uh, you two guys to join me and help me enormously. So thank you both for joining me. And we're going to talk about uh, EVs. So, Lee, I'm mm -hmm. going to ask you if you go first, because you okay. just bought an AITO or AITO, which stands for Ito, Adding yeah. Intelligence Auto. Yeah, an ITO, it, but it That's actually correct, means adding yes. intelligence auto. And I read a report, a review about this car. Apparently, your car is going to be the go-to brand for owners of cars like Bentleys. Such is the level of luxury, according to this review that I read, that Bentley owners, Rolls-Royce owners, Bugatti owners are going to park their cars and buy an Ato. Is that true? Oh, that's very, that's very interesting. That's something I'd, I'd, I'd not heard. But um, just to clarify, the, the, currently there's, there's three models in that Ito range: is the M5, the M7, and the M9. M9 being the top of the range, and that is a right. very, very luxurious vehicle. But first of all, that was kind of out of my price range. But the main reason we went for the Ito. M5, and, and actually, that's the, the sort of um, lowest in the range. One, it was within our budget. We wanted to spend around 250 to 300,000 RMB, and that mm -hmm. come in at j just on our budget. Um, but the reason we went for that is it's the only one in the three that is a pure electric. Um, the M7 wow. and M9 are both hybrids, so they also use a... Um, a petrol or diesel engine as well as a battery whereas the m5 has two versions it has the hybrid version and the pure electric version and the pure electric version is the one we went for because specifically we wanted a, a pure electric um and when we were looking around we, we've been wanting a previously um vicky my, my wife had a we had a, a car which was an old uh, VW Bora, and that was like 10 or 11 years old. And we were starting to get to the point where we're spending more and more money maintaining it. Things were going wrong. So right. we really thought it, it was time to change. But we, in Shenzhen, there's, a, there's an area close to where we live where you go and literally all the dealerships are in, in a big square area. So there's, there's literally all of them or... Uh, um, uh, BYD, Xiaopeng, Li Auto, Neo, they're, they're all there. So we spent um, pretty much most of a whole day um, sort of looking ar around them all. And the, the, another one of the major factors in choosing the ITO, I wanted a um, car that had LiDAR technology. And the reason I wanted that is I've read reports that in, in sort of safety tests on certainly on auto driving um, cars that are fitted with LIDAR have been found to be uh, somewhat safer than ones that are, um, use only visual technology, i.e. a camera. And especially in tests they did in a sort of darkness or, or very adverse conditions. A LIDAR, for anybody who doesn't know, is kind of a sophisticated kind of radar but previously these were only put into very high-end cars because the cost was quite high but because china supply chain has got behind lidar and uh, the price has actually dropped significantly and interestingly there's a um, automated vacuum manufacturer that's just brought out a model that contains a lidar so it shows you how 
you know, China's manufacturing scale has, has actually reduced the cost significantly. But getting back to my, my choice over um, car, so we looked around and most of the lower end BYD models and, and many other companies' models don't have a sort of self um, driving technology available. Most of them have um, sort of self driving on the highway, but we also wanted the sort of city uh, self driving. Um, so actually, the choice at the end came down to between the Ito N5, which again, the, the size is, is a, a thing. We wanted a sort of spacious four stroke, five seater vehicle. Um, so the choice came to between um, Neo and the Ito. Um, and I think we were looking at the, I think it's the EC6, if I remember rightly, which is a similar size. Um, but there's one factor that that um that sort of swayed me to ito one. one i i love i love huawei products yes that, that that's the one one i love huawei products i think huawei are a, a massively innovative company and i actually you know really trust their technology i was lucky enough to sit down a few months ago with the actual head guy from their auto driving program and he instilled a lot of confidence into me about their their sort of uh, auto driving features um, on the ito but the, the big overriding factor i'll be um interested to hear what fernando uh, says about this because i know he has a neo but i was concerned a little bit that because of neo's recent sales figures uh, they, to my mind if you look at the, the charts of sales they're struggling a little bit i mean they their products are really really nice the quality is great but I was just concerned about whether they will be here in another 12, 18 months time. And that had concerns from a, a warranty issue for me. And that's why ultimately I went for the ITO. Um, from a, an interior fit and technology, I think they're kind of similar. Um, but that was just the sort of overriding, you know, the, the, the factor that, that made me choose the ITO. And up to now, I've been extremely pleased with it. We're only about sort of six weeks in, but I can talk a little bit more about that that later. Okay, we'll we'll come back to that. So, Fernando, the the reason you and I were both going ah yeah is because you actually have a Neo E6, right? Um, I have an ES6. You're towing, yeah, ES6. Sorry, you're towing a two point three ton caravan, right? You call it an RV yep. trailer. Lee and I, and we outvote you. On <laughs> uh, caravan, yeah. <laughs> yeah. What drew What drew you to choose the Neo? I mean, I know the Huawei, the Aito, Aito wasn't available at the time, uh, but what drew, drove you to choose the Neo? And also, can you tell us about, because I happen to know, I've been in your car, and I know how luxurious mm. it is, so I know your reasoning for choosing that in terms of the comfort and the space and Two, two cats and a dog, two huge cats and a dog, uh, and the, <laughs> the strength to pull that. But you also got a really special deal on this, didn't you? Tell us about that. Yes, yes, something that I might be able to show you in a few minutes. Uh, but first, okay. let's talk about uh, why I chose this car. I didn't actually... I went to see the car in around summer of 2019 uh, in a place called the Neo House in Dongguan. So it's these very mm -hmm. comfy places where you can buy coffee, you can watch movies, have events, and they have all sorts of activities yeah. to create kind of like a like a following, like the people who buy Neos. Did you say have a dance? Did you say have a, dance? Did you say have a you, dance? You can watch events. Oh, I thought you said have, have a dance. <laughs> if you want to, yeah. Shake it up. Um, so <laughs> um, I went to see it summer 2019 and, and I really liked the car. And I asked him, hey, can I make a review of your car? And I said, like, how many followers do you have? I had 600 followers at the time. So <laughs> I said, like, nah. So nah. Uh, anyway, fast forward to um, around November and in, it was time for my wife to, she already been driving her car for about a year, she had a smart, and uh, we had already paid a lease on that one. So I was saying like, oh, why don't we just buy another car for you? Like something nice. I was driving a Mercedes Benz before. Um, I, I got an imported uh, uh, CL220 AMG, 
And I said, like, why don't we just buy you like a decent car? Like a because I call it a, a like a bumper car, like a pom pom chill. <laughs> a smart. You you hit the front is because you hit your toes. So okay. she was just learning, right? Um, so we went to see the Xiaopong and we really liked the 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 P7, I think it was, but yeah. it was not available. Mm -hmm. I was like, mm, okay. So I I I drew I took her around the mall to see the Neo house, like, oh, look at this one. What do you think? And she went in and she fell in love with it. She fell in love with the with the AI little thingy, the Neo, um, all the features and everything. And we walked out with a signed contract. But then again, I mean, the idea was okay, this is half a million RMB. Um, and the uh, Japan was like two hundred thousand, and her previous car was like 120 so we're like okay what do we do so let's do something you stay with the with the with the the smart for a while i take my 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 bands and we sell it and then we can buy this one so by end of november 2019 we signed the contract we gave it the down payment and here's the deal that you're talking to and the people probably have heard about it um as a limited time offer they said, like, look, if you buy before whatever date, we are going to offer you a free battery swapping deal for life. So this means that I can swap the battery of my car as many times as I want. I can swap every day. Sometimes when we're driving with the RV, we swap two, three times a day. And if I buy a new Neo car, let's say I decide to change to an ET5 or an EC or whatever, that deal will carry on to that other vehicle. So, so this is that, your life, not your car's life. It's uh, yes, basically is my life. And um, the interesting thing about that is that I was looking at the Tesla Model 3, right? Fully spec'd. My Neo is fully spec'd. And uh, the Tesla Model 3 fully spec would have been like 15 or 18,000 RMB more expensive. But then again, you end up with a battery that will degrade over time. And uh, then what do you do? You have to invest another 100,000, 200,000, whatever, in buying a new battery after 10 days or, or but up 10 days, <laughs> 10 years, 12 years, Ten or years. whatever. So for me, this idea of having a company rent these batteries for you um but which I, for me was not a rent for the people who buy today they have something called the baas battery as a service um it made a lot of sense because what they do is it's a matter of keeping like they keep fresh produce in a supermarket right mm -hmm. the ones that are not good they take them out and they bring in some fresh produce so when a battery has reached a certain um level of performance they will remove it from this huge pool of batteries and they will replace them with new batteries right now leo uh lee, lee was asking about um the future of of neo mm -hmm. i'll tell you something nobody really understands what on earth happens in terms of the neo stock market nobody knows it's a solid company they make solid uh, cars they make excellent cars great innovation um, um, they're entering, they're doing the hard work, right, of entering Europe, they, they're in Norway, they're in Germany, they're, they're doing the hard work, right? They're also going to the Middle East. But the stock market, just the stock doesn't reflect how much they do. Uh, so I understand that concern that, that Leo is, is, mm -hmm. is uh, expressing. However, looking back, it's been like that since forever it doesn't seem natural it doesn't seem seem normal it seems like forces are keeping the stock of this car low however investors seem to be able to see uh through that fuzzy investment thing because anytime they need more money they find it and there's more investment now the next move from from neo is to create a lower brand like you have toyota and and um and lexus well neo is going to be the lexus and now they're creating a lower brand that's going to be uh more affordable and more more popular so to speak 
Um, a very famous phrase by the, the CEO of NEO is that they don't make batteries with wheels. And we're going to see batteries with wheels. Uh, I have some pictures of batteries with wheels um, uh, here. So yeah, that's that's basically why I decided to to get the Neo, the deal that they offered me, and just best car I've ever driven, man. The, the acceleration on the car is just insane. So I I've been sucked you into your passenger seat before. So um, <laughs> you probably don't know this. David has pretty much said exactly the same as you, except he added that they have a massive cash reserve, which is uh, obviously good. Um, so Lee, you probably know <laughs> this. And uh, this is a this is a question that ju that just came out of what um, Fernando was just saying. Mm -hmm. What does it actually cost to fully charge? I mean, if if your car was a petrol SUV, it would probably cost you six hundred RMB to fill up with fuel. What does it cost mm -hmm. to fill up with electricity and drive it away fully charged from it from basically empty? Okay, so um, I can't actually answer that because I don't know. Um, <laughs> Because generally, we don't ever let it get to uh, empty. And the reason that is, so mm. uh, if you charge at home, um, you will look to take probably anywhere between sort of six and 10 hours to do a full charge because the, the chargers are, are generally running from a sort of standard mains outlet. So you can't pump a lot, lot of energy into the car. So we right. tend to use um, commercial chargers now. We generally let ours, most of the time, once it gets to around 30%, we, we will charge. Um, and we use the commercial chargers. Now, depending on what time of day um, you charge and what time, uh, sort of how, how long you're charging, what the um, capacity of the charger is, depends on the uh, price per kilowatt hour you pay. Okay, so the time of day. But, do yeah, yeah, but generally, up to now, we, we will do a charge from, say, 30 35% up to, to sort of full. And we're generally paying around about 50 to 60 yuan, I think, for, for that. Actually, it's my wife who normally does it. So I, 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 I apologize, but I don't have all the, no, the okay. details. But it is significantly cheaper. But um, I, I do get Fernando's point about battery swap. So the ITO that we have comes with an eight-year warranty on the battery. Right. Um, and the, 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 the thing is that the way I think about it, by the time that battery is sort of at the end of it, it's like, okay, yes, you, you can pay to have it replaced. Right. But I think the, the level of sophistication, the type of car that is available in, in eight years' time, I would probably want to change the car anyway. So you know this one yeah. good for eight years. I'm just going to explain yeah, so what Fernando is doing because he's out on his mobile phone and he's off. Fernando, can you hear us? Yeah, no, I just wanted to show you a little bit. Um, my car is at 5% right now. And I am mm -hmm. in a place, yeah, I'm in a parking lot next to the sports center in a place called Yang. Yang Zhou, Yang, I, Yang Zhou, uh, okay. in Jiangsu province. And uh, next to this sports park, there is an RV place where people can park, and there's also a swapping station. So I need to swap. I got here last night, so I need to swap. So I wanted to, I wanted to show you guys how it works. So, hi, Nomi. What's that? We're we can talk about other things. So, so that's Fernando talking to his car and his car talking back. That's interesting. <laughs> so, so basically, I pulled up to this pop, to his battery swapping station, and the car actually does um, self swapping. So it parks itself in that. It's part of the the, um, the what do you call it? Let me see. So basically, it parks itself yep. and uh, does the whole swapping uh, automatically. So you're at the swap station now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that um, didn't take long. No, I told you, the, the, the swapping station is right next to where I am. Mm. <laughs> and the swapping should take about... Let me see one second. Uh... I don't know if this is generation one, generation, generation two or three. Now they're coming out with a generation four, 
which actually actually uh, holds many more batteries and uh, can route from your highway all the way to the swapping station based on your or your plan your your route okay so now it's going to park itself right we're not we're not seeing any movement the signal's not that that good so okay hold on a second Oh, hold on. I need to I need to buckle up. You guys can go on and, and then uh, I'll come back once after I swap. Oh. <laughs> Oh, Jerry, I've got some sound issues with um, you coming through and you have frozen. I'm only getting very. Um, right. I'm only, that's yeah, better. Can I can you, hear you now. Yeah. Okay. yeah. I was going to You're ask back. you for the last for the last few months. Last year, I was in Shenzhen. We met up in Shenzhen mm -hmm. and we had dinner together. One of the things that I was really, really impressed with, which didn't expect, was to see that there are absolutely blue skies in this city, which is such a mm -hmm. and Shenzhen right next door to each other. They are literally the manufacturing hubs of China, and yet there's no pollution. Um, I even saw. I, I know that they're famous for having every bus, every taxi is electric, mm -hmm. but I saw dumper trucks, these huge, great things that hold like 40 tons of dirt moving around the city that were electric. Is there anything in Shenzhen that's not electric now? Well, there, there, there are still a little bit, but um, a majority of the, uh, I, I would say it's approaching 50% of private vehicles now that I see on Shenzhen roads that are either hybrid or electric. Um, as you mentioned, all the taxis and all the buses are electric, and that's been the case for a significant mm. amount of years now. Um, pretty much every DD I get into is electric because obviously the business model favours them to buy an electric vehicle um, because it's much more efficient to run, so they make more money. So pretty much all the DD drivers have electric vehicles. Yeah. Um, we're now starting to see fleets of electric um, e-bikes, these rental ones, um, yeah. entering Shenzhen. So, yeah, I, I would say, you know, certainly over the last two or three years, from a private vehicle point of view, I'm seeing significantly more. And if you look at, at the sales, I think the sales of EVs now are approaching – 50 percent um I, I i find it <laughs> a, a bit crazy to think that now people would still consider buying a petrol vehicle i understand that if you're like um, a petrol i had a discussion on twitter um a, a few days ago because people were comparing this new xiaomi to a porsche now in my opinion if 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 you're a petrol head, you would still buy the Porsche because, you know, I, I, I go back to the days when I owned a, a BMW Z3 and nice. on, on the English A roads, there's nothing like driving something like that. You know, as, as a as a car person, you, you've got the, the engine, you've got the gears, you know, you just don't get that electrical. It's a very different experience. But what I would say, and I, I, I find this interesting with, with Xiaomi's uh, marketing, they, they focused a lot on the performance of the car. You know, it does naught to 100 kilometers an hour in less than three seconds. It's, it's a very fast car. It, it's very sporty. But to be honest, Unless you live in a fairly rural place of China, I don't see how you're going to be able to use a car like that in China. The UK is slightly different. We have a lot of country A roads, which are quite fast roads if you've got that kind of car. But unless you're driving sort of much more remotely in China, you just don't have um, the ability to, to use that. I mean, the, the car we bought is... Um, 
it will do naught to 100 in 4.4 seconds. But there's just no way, certainly in Shenzhen, that you could even ever think of using that capability. So I'm, I'm a bit sort of, you know, but yeah, going back to your original question, that there's the electrification of transport in, in Shenzhen is just mind blowing. And, and, and I hope more. Um, sort of provinces will follow that model. I, I, I see Shanghai is becoming more electrified yeah, um, yeah. And, and I presume other provinces will do in, in due course. Yeah, I found when I, I was in Shanghai, uh, after I left you, I went to Shanghai for several weeks and um, I found a hell of a lot. And like you say, all the DDs, all the buses. So again, even Shanghai, the air is much cleaner. This is something, when I came to China in 2004, you changed your shirt two or three times a day because you had a black collar. For sure. You could taste metal in your mouth, and, and it really was bad. Now it's entirely different. So we've got mm -hmm. uh, Fernando back. He sent me a message saying he's done. Are you, th are you okay. still there? Yeah, well, basically, the swapping takes about three to four minutes. One thing that is very interesting about swapping, uh, let me sweep my, my camera around, is that during Chinese holidays, if you want to take your EV on a highway and you need to charge, the lines for charging are insane because yeah. all the brands need to use that infrastructure that's only available uh, an hour at a time. So I'm done. I'm now at, uh, what is this? 93 percent but right. when you use battery swapping you just pull up to a battery station and that's it now i want you to look there's one waiting to swap there's another waiting to swap there's another waiting to swap uh um this couldn't be any more realistic there's 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 a swapping situation where everybody does swapping because it's so much more convenient than charging. You can go ahead mm. and go with your life, go with your day. Um, if you don't have a charger at home, for example. So that's, that's a huge advantage and it's a very different business model, but that's the reason why I chose Neo over Tesla mm -hmm. and anything else that was available at the time. Um, so in a matter of five minutes, I'm done. I have 93% of my battery and I keep going with my day. The fact okay. that it's free. I, would, <laughs> I would like to just raise, raise a point around that. You, you mentioned the um, that there are large queues for, for chargers, um, and and I quite quite get that. We we did actually travel at um, Chinese New Year, although it wasn't very far. It was a, about a three hundred kilometer journey. We didn't have an issue um, that the services we stopped at had a row of about twenty five chargers. Um, we didn't have an issue now. The, the the slow charging is also something that's that's actually been um if, if you look at huawei huawei about a month ago um, announced one of their new chargers and that will charge from pretty much 15 20 percent to full within about 10 to 12 minutes um so i i, I and they 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 um, reckon they will roll out a hundred thousand of these charges over the course of 2024 um I, I, I'm actually surprised. I didn't realize till, till we bought our EV just how um, massive the charging network is in China. Like the, at the weekend, we, we went to, um, I was actually shooting a second video about our car. We, 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 we had a first video, it was really popular. And many people said, oh, we want, we want more information. So I went out to shoot another video. And during that shooting, we pulled up at a charging station. And this is a very local. I, I don't live in the center of Shenzhen. I live on the outskirts where all the locals live. I have no foreigners around me. But we pulled up at a relatively small, mediocre shopping center. And there's a charging station there with 60 something, you know, fast chargers. And that, when I say a fast charger, that is now, we went for, I think we were at about 40% and we went to full in about 38 to 40 minutes, uh, right. which is not, not crazy. But so the next generation of chargers will do that in like 10 to 12 minutes. Mm -hmm. uh, now that's only for cars that can support that. If you look at some cars, um, like some of the the uh, ones that are a few years old, you won't be able to charge that fast. Your car has to be able to to facilitate that fast charging. But from a technical point of view, my my 
thinking and my opinion is that in another three to five years time this won't be an issue there'll be batteries that will take a car 1500 2000 kilometers without a charge battery technology is advancing at such a rapid pace you know you're even now seeing that it's it's viable to put um you know these batteries in in hgv uh, tractor units because the right. the power for the density of the batteries is decreasing or increasing whichever way around that is you know significantly fast and as i mentioned earlier there's a company called catl and they're on the leading edge of, of battery technology so yeah. you know I, I think but but fernando's point is 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 a really good one that um when your battery does start to deteriorate which inevitably happen that's less of a problem for a neo than it would be pretty much any other um uh, vehicle and the other point i'd like to raise and this is again why i was concerned with um the um neo route and, and why i mentioned it. i'm actually also a stockholder of, of neo and I'm, I'm at a massive underwater position at the moment on that um because you know i i, I thought that they were going to be and i think their technology is great i think their cars are, are extremely well I do think they're slightly overpriced in the market now, but hopefully with their sub brand, um, they will sort of um, remedy that. So that, that's a thing to, to, to consider. But I think that, 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 that potential that you can get a brand new battery is, is, is very, very good. The, the only one thing I would say is that to build those battery swap stations is incredibly expensive for Neo. And like, for example, um you know for, for neo to enter europe and sell on the base of that battery swap technology they have to invest a huge huge amount of money into building out those battery swap stations and i do think that's a little bit of a negative on neo's part you know a standard charging bay will cost you know infinitely less to to construct than a neo um charging station so that, that's just a sort of counter argument that i would put to to mm. to neo strategy let, let me just answer a couple of questions that have come through here uh, i saw one from kirkland day it's gone up off the screen now uh, talking about jobs and work in china contact me by email kirkland my email is in the uh, the bio of my youtube channel and i will answer all those questions but we're talking evs today rather than jobs so let's stay off that topic Another one says, Jerry, do you have a car? That was quite a long while ago, but uh, we've been talking ever since. The answer to that is no, I ride a bike, but I do now have an electric bike, which is just a normal standard uh, road bike with an electric motor on. Now, there are electric bikes which look like motorbikes here and electric bikes that look like scooters. Mine looks like a bicycle and... Um, it's really quite good. I, I can rock it up to about 45 kilometers an hour on this thing and uh, really enjoy the ride and get a good exercise too because once it has helped you accelerate up to a certain point, it cuts out. It does, it's, it's there to mm -hmm. pedal assist. It's not there to pedal for me. I do have on it, it has a, a, a throttle, just a little button I can push, push down and, and I, I can take a break. But the, the bike mm -hmm. itself doesn't use that all the time it helps me away from lights it helps me going up hills but i'm doing all the work when i'm riding on the flat i'm riding at 30 kilometers an hour and it's my legs doing all the pumping so the electric bike has been great for us and we're thinking of getting one each the one i'm riding is actually my wife's i gave it to her for christmas last year don't tell her that <laughs> getting one each and we're going to go to mongolia on our bikes probably next year we're thinking this year but probably next year um someone said do i have long thick mittens attached to throttles like you see on many chinese electric bikes no i don't, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> they put their hands into winnie the pooh gloves uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, that's uh, banned in no, China, apparently, Jerry. I wanted to add something to that I that I saw after they did the <laughs> they released the SU7. Uh, China released the guidelines for the operation and management of service of public electric vehicle charging stations. So basically, they're classifying now chargers in three kinds uh, because basically the first national charging standard of the 800 volt era 
is here. So they said that they're going to uh, categorize the fastest one, the ultra fast charging equipment, um, are those that have a range above 360 kilowatt hours. Um, that that is going to that's the one that that you were saying charges you whatever 300 kilometers in like in less than 10 minutes, and you mm -hmm. can go on with your day. So that's that's the ultra fast. Um, then they have the ones that um, uh, equipment with power of a single nozzle between 180 kilowatts and 360 kilowatt, and that they call supercharging. And then anything under um, between 30 kilowatt and 100 kilowatt, they call that just fast charging. Anything below that, it will be just slow charging. That's probably what you have at home. So that's mm -hmm. something that was released not long ago. Um, so yeah. <laughs> hmm. Very interesting. Let's um, we talk about this Xiaomi. I, I this only got launched the other day, and I saw one on the road the the day after it was launched. I thought that's that's really unusual, and I, I saw one of this color as well. I looked at that and thought, what the hell is that? And it is kind of Porsche esque. It's not Porsche. You can see it's not Porsche, but when you see it at the front, you kind of think, is it? No. And you get around the side, you go, no, that's not a Porsche. This is this Xiaomi SUV. Did you hear the story that's going around on um, Chinese social media about this car? Did either of you hear the story, the ripoff? No. Uh, I heard something about it, yes. Like, basically, everybody went on to, to book it. Basically, you give a little bit of money and you book your car. It goes into pre-order. Um, but they only have a certain amount of time until you can uh, remove that booking. You say, oh, I don't really want to buy it, so I'm just going to remove it. That yeah. might have affected the numbers that they produced. They went up to 88,000 or 89,000 90, um, bookings, almost 90,000 mm -hmm. bookings in one day. Um, but then some people uh, forgot that there was a, a window of time during which they could actually withdraw <laughs> their their booking if they wanted the money back it was no no commitments no no penalties just withdraw your money but once the time passed and they forgot about it they thought it was a joke or they thought it was oh this is funny oh I'm, yeah i'm gonna buy one and joke with your friends around the table and um they were asking for the for the for the return return of the money and they're like sorry the the, the window of time has already passed yeah. So there's a little bit of a talk around society about what mm -hmm. happened to some of these people. But if you know more details, Jerry, do, do go on. Well, I, a few details. It's, I've got the same story as you. It's, um, it's what's called a cooling off period. China has this. I think most countries have yeah. this. Now. If you buy something, you have a cooling off period. And the cooling off period was three days. Now, what a lot of people did was they put their 5,000 deposit in, got the order approved, and showed it to their friends. They, they took a <laughs> screenshot of it, put it on their moments and said, look, I've just put a deposit down on a Xiaomi SU7. It's going to be the best car in, in uh, you know, it's a telephone, which has turned into a car, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, having a big joke about it. And then Xiaomi said, uh, we understand that some people are doing this as a joke, so we're going to extend the cooling off period to seven days. And they send out messages to everybody saying that they're doing this. And some people were stupid enough or ignorant enough or not paying attention or too lazy. I don't know what their reasoning, but some people didn't realize that this three days had passed. <laughs> then the seven days had passed. And now they're complaining because they're not getting their money back because Xiaomi oh, said, if you place an order and you don't cancel it within the cooling off period, that's going to become a production car and it's yours. It belongs to you. Mm -hmm. Now, if you don't That was something... Um... Yeah, that was something that we, we had exactly the same. They, I, th I think it was also three days when we ordered ours. And they says, you know, once that date has passed, because it's then gone into, it, it's not like the West where, you know, you, you wait months and months and months. And, and, and uh, you know, the, the, they manufacture the car pretty much <laughs> very shortly after they get an order because that that's the nature of, of manufacturing here in china it's done very quickly so we were we were told that you've got this three days um if you cancel after that three days you don't get your deposit back i mean that, that was fine for us because we, we were going to buy it yeah. but um 
like you say, with this Xiaomi one, I think a lot of people, I, I wonder, I, I suspect the same happened with Cybertruck as well, because the, yeah. the Cybertruck had a huge amount of orders um, in, in the first couple of days. And I, I would imagine, you know, there's not many people out there that are going to pay this person and go, oh, well, we're going to wait for three years. You know, it's like, I, I think Tesla has this, this sort of habit of, of announcing things that are just in the mind of Elon at the time he announces them because, you know, ever since Tesla first came out, it was going to have full mm. self-driving. And how many years, like five years later, it still doesn't have um, full self-driving. And just something very interesting on this. About a year or so ago, I visited um, this um, facility in Chongqing, uh, China, where they have this kind of academy of, it's like a central Chinese place of autonomous driving, like a right. research center. And I actually spoke to a professor there and he says, until you get um, <clears throat> in infrastructure in cities that can actually communicate back with the car, he doesn't believe full self-driving is possible. And oh. I'll talk about it a little bit later about my experience in, in the ITO about the full self-driving because we, we've now got the full self-driving package and it's not perfect for sure. <clears throat> okay, cool. Um, I wanted to go across some of the negatives that I've seen. Um, <clears throat> this, <clears throat> Fernando, maybe you can answer this question. Um, the dangers. Uh, how often has your car burst into flames or is it just about to burst into flames? <clears throat> And this is something, yeah, exactly. <laughs> We're seeing this. I personally have a theory. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's an opinion. It's a theory that this is the oil industry putting out scare stories about cars bursting into flames. Because I've seen a graph which shows how many cars actually burst into flames. And it's a lot less today than they used to be. But mm -hmm. the oil industry say they're all electric cars. Is your car a death trap for you and do you have a fire extinguisher because i've got one here i can give you i do have a fire extinguisher sir of course that's a um, police regulation you need to have one in your car at all times i have one oh, special for electric vehicles <laughs> but no he, he, here's the thing um i will say that that the chemistry that goes into making batteries it has its risks, but there's different kinds of, of chemicals that are used to create the batteries, to, to uh, store the energy and to release the energy. Mm. I do wish that my car had the BYD battery. You and I, we we've went to it. BYD, yeah. right? it and too. we see, yeah, we see that video yeah. where they show the, the perforation, right? So they, they perforate a battery, a regular battery, and it just bursts into flames and poof, it's a big explosion. Um, but when they do that to the BYD battery, which is different architecture, different different chemicals, then there's no, first of all, there's no explosion, there's no fire. And most importantly, there is no loss of voltage. That's the key thing when when one of these batteries has a failure or, or, or has an, uh, an accident, right? And, and the chemicals come in contact with each other and then there's an ignition and there's a fire. Mm -hmm is that the loss of voltage locks everything and people get trapped inside. So that's why the word trap comes in. It's, it's, just, it's just what happens when your main source of power and electricity um, gets uh, compromised. Um, now, with regards to, to the videos that, that people see out there, um, I think that a lot of the times you see you see... This is an issue with the low, with the wide range of prices in China. You can have anything of any price. Think about those those EV bikes, right? Yep. Those those are scooters that the kids uh, run around the city delivering. Why am I delivering uh, food or delivering packages and all these things? Some of these things are are very cheap, and the battery in them is not of the safest uh, quality. And then those things would catch fire. I think that the same could apply to some of the cars um, that are of the lowest, lowest price range. Uh, they got to cut corners somewhere and then the risks become higher. Um, but you've also seen all brands. It's not a China thing. It's not a, mm. it's not a one brand mm -hmm. thing. It's 
there are issues with this as much uh, of an issue as a gasoline tank just leaking and then a fire being next to it. I mean, these things these things happen, and I don't think that one is riskier than the other. That's mm -hmm. that's the way I see it. Yeah. Well, I I shared a graph on Twitter a couple of days ago because there was somebody talking about this and, and a very short quick amount of research on um, google um even last year in the us there were over 200,000 vehicle fires now a large majority it didn't break down if they were ic vehicles or electric vehicles but just because of the the ratio of evs to ic vehicles on the road it must mean a majority of those 200,000 vehicle fires were ICE vehicles. And if you go back, I think it was 10 years, Jerry, there were, there were almost three to 400,000 per year in the USA alone. So that's the yeah. first point I'd like to make. The second point I'd like to make, just coming back um, about Fernando, and, and he's dead right, you know, to a point you get what you pay for. However, about a year and a half ago, I was lucky enough to go to Wu Ling's facility. And man, the amount of testing they do on their batteries is like unreal. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that the, the EV industry realized that this is a, a sort of a bit of a hurdle to some people buying an EV because it, it's been, you know, people like Serp and ZA have spread these videos, yeah. you know, trying to claim that there's, there's, you know, fires every day all over china you know this this is this, this is his mode of operation you know he takes one isolated incident but in his little head you know it's happening in every city every minute of the day you know but i was amazed at the amount of of effort you know uling and their car is like what six thousand dollars the amount That's of what? effort they yeah that this is the one the amount of effort they put into sort of battery testing and, and putting it through all different sort of rigorous tests, cold and heat and crash tests. I was quite stunned. Yeah, because this this car, the, the particular model that I've got up there now, it retails at five, uh, equivalent of 5,000 US dollars. It's in the 40,000 RMB range. But they've just bought out a new one, which they call the Ching Kong, which is clean air or clear sky, literally. Um, the Kong Tiao is the air conditioning and Ching is clear or crystal. So, I mean, the, 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 the car is brought out with a new one. I think it means it has air conditioning in it and maybe mm -hmm. it didn't before. Uh, but we'll, we'll see about that. Uh, they also have, and this is one of, this is my favorite thing. I, I just oh, yeah. loved these. <laughs> They are so so cute. They are they real. Really are. They look like toy cars, but they're real cars. <laughs> and some of them are even you can see. There's a four seater, uh, not a very big four seater. I don't think I would want to. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> You've been to the model. Now, I, I, one of the questions that I was going to ask, and I talked with this to Fernando about this yesterday. I was going to ask, have you been? But now you've just said you've been. I mm -hmm. guess that's the uh, Liuzhou factory in Guangxi. And that's I was right. Ask Fernando, if he'd been to this city, I was there on a bike um, in the middle of COVID. My wife and I cycled from Guangxi and we had seven weeks on our bike. And I was in this city and I, we were sitting in a restaurant upstairs looking out the window. And I said, have a look out the window. What do you see? And she says, cars, lots of cars. I said, what about the cars? And she said, well, they're all the same. And literally, I, I kid you not, they were all this. And I talked to Fernando about it. And I think, Fernando, you, you can put up a little slide or can I put up this slide? You need to bring it in. It's a, it's a yeah. short video. So I have Tell three short it. videos. So let me show you. <laughs> uh, which one is this? this one? All right, guys. So we have come to New Joe where I have noticed something extremely interesting. There are a ton of tiny cars like this. These are all Chinese made brands that are tiny, tiny, tiny little cars, but it's very unusual how many there are. There's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds all over the streets to the point where they actually make their parking spots for them. There's no way a regular car is going to fit in this place. So, yeah, that's a very unusual thing that I've noticed here in Liuzhou. 
<laughs> so that's Liu Zhou. It it's an incredible little city in the middle of nowhere, effectively. And we cycled mm -hmm. into it. And I honestly, I believe we had dinner in that street. It looks the same. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's, it's that open, it's that, that it's wet market city. and it's very popular. Yeah, when you say it's a small city, one and a half million people or two million people live there. And I think they must all work for the Wu Ling factory. <laughs> I mean, they, they, they're very proud in that city of, of what they make. And I'll be honest with you, before I went, I thought, ah, it's, it's not going to be that good. You know, it's so cheap. But when yeah. I actually drove it, I was actually impressed. Now, it's not like driving like, you know, like mine or Fernando's what we bought. But what you've got to remember is the price. But actually, for the price, it's very, very good. And I think Wu Ling, I, I don't know whether they're still doing this, but not so long ago, they were doing a deal where you could pay, I think it was 20,000 RMB and you could get the car. And then basically, you just paid a rental of something like 250 RMB a month. And I think you could then own the car. And I think for, for like students or young people in their first job, I mean, mm. I potentially buy one. I, I also think they're very, very cute too. And I'd actually buy one as a second car, just as a city car around Shenzhen. You know, you, you want to pop down the supermarket. You want, mm. But I'd like to decorate. I mean, and, and in the, the, the city you're just talking about, you see many of them decorated with like ears on yeah. and paint jobs and Mickey Mouse and all this. Yeah, yeah. Winnie the Pooh so down cool. the I posted it on Twitter. We've got one of those cars <laughs> painted in Winnie the Pooh. Look, this one's going to be in trouble soon. Yeah, <laughs> just just like this thing. one, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, I, I can't get a focus on it at the moment, but yeah, this, this is a, a, of, that's this that, is a little is. Winnie the Pooh car. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. Um, I'm going to tell you something that's going to make you fume here, Fernando. On the back of your um, RV caravan, you have a rack for your bikes, right? At the front, yeah. Oh, at the front of your RV. I've seen because I've seen your RV, but it, it self parks. I wasn't sure which direction it was going. Um, I've actually got a video of, of Fernando parking his RV. He gets out of his car, uncouples everything, and then starts pressing buttons on it on a remote controller, and the, the thing parks itself. It's that's, amazing. That's another EV, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> got electric wheels. Sure. Um, that's a thing anyway, that, that is going to revolutionize. Oh. Sorry, that, that, that's that's something that is going to revolutionize caravan and 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 tourism in Europe as well. Because all these electric cars now are coming out with these cables that can power an RV, a caravan. Yeah. So you forget about just getting solar power or anything. Just hook it up to your car, and you got your heating, mm -hmm. your conditioning, your your everything, uh, mm -hmm. with a much larger battery that's already built into your car. So that's one of the reasons because because. A lot of people ask me about the cost of my travels, <laughs> and they can't imagine how cheap it is. <laughs> True. Sorry, Jerry. Well, what I was going to say about this thing, the other day I went through a car park by the river here in Zhongshan, and there was a huge RV. Now, this one was an RV, not a caravan. It was a truck with a, a, a hotel room on the back. And on the back of that was like a forklift truck rack and on that was a wooling car <laughs> so this is someone who has got an rv with a car attached to it instead of a bike rack he doesn't have his two bikes he's got his little wooling so if he goes through to another city and he wants to just go sightseeing locally rather than take the whole rv or get a dd he just drops the wooling down him and his wife or the kids get in the back and and off they go what a fantastic idea yeah for sure well those are sure. huge those are overlanders and they're extremely expensive and very they very are, yeah. market but i think i think it might change though because byd have just um produced a chassis that um a company are using to build a, an rv back on it and that's fully electric so that 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 will be that's an interesting de development. I mean BYD, I, pe people think they just do cars, but actually they're they're that's one of the they're one of the companies that produces a whole range of commercial vehicles. And in fact, um, very recently they won a contract in California to build school buses mm. um, because literally they have no competition. No, um, and, and actually no. many buses around the world are actually either BYD themselves or um, a venture, a BYD venture with a local partner, because yeah. literally nobody 
virtually nobody else has the technology and now they're pushing it into i think they're working with there's a massive um construction machinery company in um, china called sany s-a-n-y and they're um you know producing a lot of of very big commercial uh, things like vehicles that. earth movers excavators all these kind of things based on um electric and the next stage of that of course is that um not only will they be ev they'll be autonomous so instead of having people on a construction site these diggers and earth movers are just controlled from a console at a desk um so these guys you'll just have an office full of people at consoles you know in mines and that so there's no danger to those personnel uh, which is a, another great and mm. and because they're intelligent, they all know when to go back to their own charging stations to charge themselves and all that kind of thing. So, you know, th this is revolutionizing not not just the the you know car industry, but also the construction and mining industry too. And the ports. You were asking uh, I was, about I was in mm -hmm. port recently, and it is it's hundred percent autonomous. The, these huge mm -hmm. trucks moving around the cranes are moving things onto the trucks the trucks are moving off the cranes are storing the the containers it, it, it's totally autonomous and totally electric as well mm -hmm. sorry for that. i have a video i have a video on my on my travel channel are we there yet uh where i show uh, a company in dongguan in sunshine lake next to huawei where they are building they're some of the first people to build electric outboard and onboard motors for ships right. and boats ships not, so, not the dinghies and things they, but ships. they do mm -hmm. they do tiny dinghies so they they do tiny things for go for going fishing but they go for they they do speed boats and they do ferries as well now imagine what the future is for this if if you're fishing for example and you have a a, a propeller a motor going just very very quiet uh, being able to uh, get closer to to um, animals and things like that that would mm -hmm. be awesome. But this company is doing absolutely great. Is great for a backup, for example. If you go mm -hmm. sailing around the world, well, you got a tiny backup that can take you out of a, a, a tough spot if you need. Um, these applications now they have the the flying cars, right? Basically, personal flying cars that are also electric. All this stuff, it's it's we're living in the future. Mm. We are truly living in the future. And you don't see much of this in the West. Um, which is which is why I think they're trying to to cover the sun with their hands, you know, like oh, oh don't come here, don't come here. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna show us how the um the wooling parks. This is a really interesting thing. You got a little let's see if it's this one. <laughs> yeah, just pull that up. But just just to, before we move on, because I've got one more, another question to come. But all right, can we, let's put this one up just to show how the Wuling parks. Mm -hmm. Do you want me to bring it in? Yeah. There. All right. This is a. Yes, this is a. One hundred meter walk, and <laughs> all you can see is tiny cars. Oh, that was uh, the other video. Oh, other video. <laughs> no, okay. but the interesting thing is that they park like motorcycles. Yeah. They put their back mm -hmm. to the sidewalk and they park traverse, not not along the road, but traverse because they're so tiny. Uh -huh. So it saves a lot of a lot of room in the city. <laughs> hmm. Let Let's move on. I saw a question come up about hydrogen. Uh, so Lee, a question for you uh, mm -hmm. about other technologies. I I read recently that Japan is not going down the track of EVs. They're going down the track mm -hmm. of two different things. One is hybrid, which uh, my dad used to have a hybrid Toyota. It was a fantastic car. And the other one uh, was the, uh, his was the Yaris. Really, really nice car. And mm -hmm. uh, the other one is hydrogen. So it looks like Japan are not going the EV track. Do you think that's a cost issue? Do you think it's uh, they, they, they see a better option down this using that track? Or do you think they've just realized that China has just got such a great big leap ahead of them that they can't compete? What's the story? I I think it's down to that they can't compete. I think um, obviously some of the largest legacy automakers are in Japan. Mm. And I think they were very, very late to the game. Um, I spoke to a guy 
um, about a year ago at an event I was at, and he's actually a hydrogen engineer, uh, actually working for a company in China. And he was saying that it's still some way off. Right. Um, now, I think I think it's Toyota that have been talking about this for some time, and they keep making promises, but the, you know they they never actually bring it to market. Um, and I was actually in Japan um, sort of a couple of weeks ago, and I was surprised that the literally I was there for ten days. I don't think I saw more than two EVs on the road. Um, I, th I think where China benefit is they realised many many years ago that. EV was going to be the new vehicle technology. They, they were never able to compete in ICE vehicles. So they, they tried a little bit. Most of their efforts were disastrous, really. But they put all their efforts into um, EVs, you know, from a point of view of even, you know, owning the mines or having partnerships with the mines to get the minerals and, and the whole supply chain. And that's where they've come really, really strong. And I think. Personally, I think that for the foreseeable future, that EV is going to be the technology. Um, and I think most of the world are going to benefit from that. I mean, we, we now see Chinese companies making big strides into pretty much everywhere apart from America and to some extent the EU because they're just sticking ridiculous tariffs on because they, they want to protect their own industries. But if you actually look at EU... And you had the um, chairman or the CEO of Mercedes-Benz um, in the last couple of days come out and virtually beg with the EU not to put tariffs on Chinese EVs because Mercedes-Benz and Volkswagen still make a huge amount of their profit in the Chinese market. And they're absolutely scared to death of retaliation. Mm. Um, you know, so uh, uh, I think I think the eu will, will come to some sort of compromise and and interestingly if trump gets elected next election he says he's open to chinese companies building joint ventures factories in, in the us um, because then it will give work to us workers and i think that's interesting because i think at that point will chinese companies go for that because then if obviously trump is he can't do a third term and somebody else gets it. Will they then go, oh, well, we're just going to take over those factories or you've got to clear out because, you know, there's no stability in the U.S. market for, for Chinese operators. That'll be very interesting to see what happens there. It, it is they interesting. Did it Russia, they did it to Afghanistan. Exactly. Sorry, Fernando, go on. No, they go did on. it to Russia. They did it to Afghanistan. They just take their mm -hmm. money and just bye-bye. Yeah. Yeah. But the, the way that the Chinese um, manufacturing, car manufacturing, the auto industry in China existed only because of that. What China did to the West is said, if you want to build cars in China, you're welcome to build them. If you want to sell cars to China, we're going to whack massive tariffs on them. Mm -hmm. So you can come here and build them and we'll give you all the workers you need. You're sharing the technology. That's your choice. You want the Chinese market. This is what you have to do. So VW mm -hmm the first and and they were quite happy with that mercedes happy for Porsche sure happy. these companies are doing very very well in china much better than they're doing in europe and the usa mm -hmm. so they are much happier as you say the the ceo of mercedes was was begging the eu don't do this yeah don't do this. well i think jerry there's there's something else behind that i i think mm -hmm. european car manufacturers know that they can't be competitive if they build those cars in Europe. So what I, I think will either happen, they either want to do joint ventures and put factories in Europe. And I think I think it's one of, I think you'd possibly be why do you potentially talking about building a factory in Hungary. Yes. But the other thing I, I think they will want to do is actually build, like similar to what Tesla have done, is build their Mercedes electric vehicles in China and then sell them into the um european market because i don't think i think they know like we know that tesla's facility in shanghai is way more cost effective than any of his other plants anywhere around the world and i think potentially that's what some of the european car brands want to do they want to build them in china and this will be very interesting where 
They're, they're talking about putting uh, tariffs on cars that are manufactured in, in China. Will that also apply to Tesla or will they give a special consideration to Tesla? Because, mm -hmm. you know, a, a, a lot of the cars that, that Tesla build in China are not for the Chinese market. They're shipped to many yeah. other countries. So I think it's a dilemma that these the, the US and the EU have here. Yeah, they also forget that General Motors have, I think, four, and Ford has, I think, six. It might be the other way around. But General Motors and Ford have between them 10 car manufacturing plants here in China. Mm -hmm. Toyota have uh, – Honda and Toyota are massive in Guangzhou. They, they mm -hmm. have massive plants there. And also up in Changchun in the north where most of the cars are actually made. But these are huge, huge uh, export markets for Chinese-built cars. Mm -hmm. What are they going to do if the car? Uh, the other one I thought of was Geely or Geely. Uh, mm -hmm. That car is actually a Volvo as well. So Sweden mm -hmm. is exporting cars to America called Volvo, but they are a Chinese brand. Are they going to do the yeah. same thing with that? So they've really got to start looking. Go on, Fernando. Now they're throwing something else, which is okay. Let's go to the source because it's it's all about stopping China. The whole. UHRC, um, the Uyghur Human Rights Project thing, yeah. that they're now producing papers saying that um, the sourcing of aluminium in Xinjiang is done with uh, forced labor. And right. aluminium no, goes it. into every single frame <laughs> of, of, of most cars or yeah. accessories and parts, wheels, things like that. So now everything that that, that is touched by 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 Xinjiang, but but factories in Xinjiang could theoretically get sanctioned, and that's what they're pushing for, right? It's not going to affect only Xinjiang; it's going to affect every single company uh, that that has anything to do yeah. with with car manufacturing that uses aluminium for, uh, that comes yeah. from Xinjiang. And how can you actually know exactly where your 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 aluminium is coming from? Um, Oh, they, they know it's this, and that's why they, they keep coming game. out with this bullshit Just narrative, game. you know? In the air and it's going to pick up speed, pick up some support, and, and then you end up with some sort of sanction, like cotton tomatoes, like like all these things. So that's that's one of the issues that happened to Porsche and Bentley and, and um, Audi, who had a lot of cars stopped at the, at the ports in the U.S. because of this particular um, problem. They have wheels made uh, with certain parts, wheels and other things made with aluminium that they could not actually say where it came from. Um, mm -hmm. If you cannot prove it, then we have every reason to believe that it's made with forced labor in Xinjiang. Um, <laughs> they have so many tools at their disposal. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's a sad thing. Yeah, they, 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 it's the guilt until proven innocent. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, you, 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 you can't... It, how How is it possible to... to you know, I, I, it's just ridiculous, I, and I I don't understand why more people just don't see through the bullshit of, of it. Really, I really don't. It's just it's just nuts. Um, I, I don't know. I don't know. It's just madness. Yeah, yeah. I, I've I've got family members in Australia who've contacted me and said, you know, can you stop posting stuff like this? You know, you can't be the only one who's mm -hmm. right. Everybody else says the opposite to you. So, well, actually, mm -hmm. that's not true. Everyone in media is saying the opposite to me. But, uh, yeah, everybody in China is saying the, the same as me. I've got mm -hmm. one more question that, about uh, a complaint because I, I'm, I'm an Australian citizen. I follow Australian media. And we had a, a prime minister, uh, Scott Morrison. He's gone now, thank goodness. Um, <laughs> I don't, I've, I've never yet met a person who likes him. Even people who support his party don't like him. <laughs> and he's gone to America, which is perfect. They're welcome to him. He's working for think tanks in America now in the... Oh, Pacific. perfect. <laughs> yeah. Well, he got his just rewards. That was, that was for him. He, he was the guy who did the AUKUS thing. But a couple of years ago, when he was still prime minister, he was on national television. He said, guys, you've really got to forget about this EV thing. EVs cannot tow your boat or your trailer. They, they're just not capable of doing it. And I have proof positive that they are. And 
he's sitting right here. Fernando, mm -hmm. is this true that EVs cannot tow a boat or a trailer for the Australian market, please? Just go to the Cybertruck video, <clears throat> right? When he's pulling, uh, is beating a Porsche while towing yeah. a Porsche. But anyway, mm -hmm. no, it is possible because these things are four wheel drive, right? Mm -hmm. And it also depends on the kind of motors. So mine has, has, uh, Two motors at the back and one motor at the front so mm -hmm. it's got a lot of power to do that it's absolutely possible it's a matter of how you configure the the gears and the motors so that they produce more torque or not or you want speed or you want power think about the rivian for example there's just tons tons of abilities that these cars can have and they're designed for different things think about mm -hmm. All, all these all these trucks that deliver goods around China. We're not talking about the tiny bikes, the big trucks. Most of them are electric. Most mm -hmm. of them are electric and they carry mm -hmm. things up and down and they have a whatever certain range. And so no, Yeah, I mean again as I, as, I, as I mentioned earlier, I think a lot of this the, the motor technology is not an issue what what whatsoever there's there's plenty of powerful enough motors the big issue is the battery but the the, the speed that they're innovating on battery technology is like breakneck yeah, you know yeah. and, and, and we're at the early days you know you, you look at companies like byd and catl they're making you know byd just in the last 12 months increase their headcount on r and d staff by thirty thousand. Thirty thousand additional r and d people one company one company you know and then you look at, at companies like huawei who are also probably um you know doing r and d on battery technology catl probably have a huge r and d team I, I i think it was um Material science, which is, is what batteries is chemistry and, and physics and material science, material engineering. How many people does China graduate each year in those disciplines? You know, the, the, these big companies have got massive resource to go. So the, this technology is moving at breakneck speeds, you know. What one other question I, I would be interested in in airing. Um if I'm okay to do that, Jerry, is how do you guys see the EV market going? Because right at the moment, I think there's way too many producers of electric vehicles in China. And some of these legacy automakers like, you know, Great Wall and um, is it F FWB? Um, they have electric vehicle divisions, but they're not doing that good. Personally, I think over the next few years, there's going to be a huge amount of consolidation. I think a lot of the smaller ones are either going to go bust or it, my take on NEO, for example, would be I, I don't think NEO would go bust simply because they have a lot of technology, they have a lot of IP. I think more than likely if they did run into financial difficulty, they would be swallowed up by a bigger player. I mean, you look at BYD at the moment, they're on a charge. They're 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 like dominant in in the, the the sort of lower end of the market for sure and they they have a lot of vehicles that are coming out that are going to hit the the higher end of the market but what they've done they are literally you know they build every part of that vehicle that they're not using or they're, they're getting less and less reliance on outside supply so i wonder whether a company like byd will just swallow up some of these smaller players, because I don't think the market is big enough to support all these manufacturers. I really don't. And and I just see that there will be some consolidation. I I think that there's there's something to what Gina Raimondo said, that that, that these are better uh, iPhones with wheels. There's there's a lot of there's a lot of small cars that are just very basic cars with a battery and some kind of tablet thing. That, that can answer your questions that can, sure. that can you can touch screen oh look it's got a map oh look i can watch videos oh look at right so they don't have the highest technology but they have things that are way better than than legacy cars at those mm -hmm. prices so people are going to choose 
oh i'll just rather buy this mm -hmm. one uh than to buy a, a, an old uh, a small suzuki or a small um fiat or whatever this one this one has technology that that one doesn't have that is something going for um the small ev like wuling like bauma like all this bauma is white horse mm -hmm. so all these cars have a a market for for the people who live in the countryside who are the people who who have this need for transportation but they live in big cities where parking is very difficult or you know so these there's tons of brands like in Lujo, i saw at least at least 10 different brands i agree with you some of these are just going to disappear be absorbed and and be consolidated into a large brand that ex that, that, that their expertise is going to be this kind of transportation solution mm -hmm. for the cities um that's where you see the vast majority of cars there's also mid-range sedans and mid-range uh suvs that have this weird names and they tend to disappear um there was another brand not so long ago high fee hi-fi who yeah. ran into trouble already uh yes because yes. The, the the how do you start a company and and when you think about it elon musk did the the opposite of what china did elon musk started with a very expensive car the roadster that then mm -hmm. went on to finance the development of cheaper cars and more affordable cars he never got to a car that was really really affordable which was his plan he just stayed on the model three and up but china did something different because china went on full-on developing public transportation electric mm -hmm. what does that do automatically it's just a signature yeah a pen a, a mm -hmm. decree we're going to go electric so within six months so all the taxes are going to be electric and all the right well the infrastructure mm -hmm. has to be built yeah the charging infrastructure has to be built mm -hmm. so now anybody who's in the private sector goes like oh infrastructure is there so now the private individuals will jump into the private market and start buying cars that are electric so uh, the the push for electrification of the fleets in china came from the government the effort was made by the government and and now we are here so everybody jump into this ready to consume meal <laughs> so to yeah, say yeah, yeah. Uh, but a lot of these companies would not have been able to do that what they did they, they tried to do what they're trying to do had it not been for the infrastructure being there and thanks to well the push to go electric by the chinese government um mm -hmm. totally agree with what you're saying Lee. a lot of them are going to disappear low bottom bottom uh, of the of the price range mid range and the fight is going to be for those that offer the best quality for price mm -hmm. the best the best bang for your buck and mm -hmm. i think that there you're looking at technology and innovation in 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 manufacturing mm -hmm. so high-tech factories that's what you're looking at you're not looking at just cheap materials made plastic you're looking at something that delivers high quality at, at the best price possible mm -hmm. yeah i i mean i'm in agreement with that uh, there's always going to be a market for the wooling the little five thousand eight thousand r and uh, dollar not rmb if it was rmb be cheaper than my bike but a, a, <laughs> a five thousand dollar car always has a market and china is a big market for that you mentioned rural china lots of people have motorbikes when the motorbike comes to the end of its life it's a good idea to look at a small family car now if you can't afford mm -hmm. a, if you can't afford a hongqi or you can't afford a neo or an ito then you're going to look at something like Woolen. Woolen also does a huge range of vans. They started off building Mitsubishi yes. vans here a long, long time ago, and yeah, they were the source of Chinese Mitsubishis. Uh, mm -hmm. So they they have this kind of history and culture. They're always going to be there for the small guy, the little guy who can only afford to get from his motorbike to a small family car. But then you've got the the factory owners and the the. I, I was in a Hongqi, an electric Hongqi, the other day, a few weeks ago. Now, we're talking about a 3 million RMB car here. Mm -hmm. So everything in between there, there's always going to be that range. So what, what we're going to have, yes, you're right. The Hi-Fi was uh, funded by someone in the Middle East, I think. 
it had a lot of money coming from, I think, Qatar, but I might be wrong on that. Uh, but it was it was a Middle Eastern country that was investing in hi-fi, and it was H-I-P-H-I, which was a, an interesting, and it was a really, really, it is still, you're still around, but it's a really good-looking car, in my opinion, one of the nicest. But you don't see many of them, and I think your comment is spot on, Lee, and I, Fernando, you, you agree with it. We're going to see a consolidation of brands, mm -hmm. but not necessarily a consolidation of models. They need to have the full range mm -hmm. of models. We are going to see the brands disappearing or some of them disappearing. I don't know how many there are. Somebody told me there's, there's 90 different brands of electric car in China now. I, I don't know if that's true. I think there's 90 manufacturers. I, I think there's mm -hmm. th there's this huge amount. Um, yeah. I, I, I was at the uh, Shanghai Auto Show last year, and I'll be going to the Beijing one this year. And, you know, I, 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 I live in China, and I was coming across brands and manufacturers the auto that i'd never seen before I'm like yeah. well you know and i'm like I, i'm thinking now the, the market how it is i mean the market is super competitive here you'd mm -hmm. be mad to start up an ev company right now wouldn't you? you'd be absolutely nuts you know because i mean i i heard a rumor that xiaomi are losing a significant amount on every car it, it will sell simply because the, the capital investment to set up the factory is just huge. Right. Um, they, they are using a contract manufacturer, but they've actually built um, a new factory for that. But, you, you know, I mean, you've got to be making a fair bit of profit on um, a car to, to cover that initial mm -hmm. investment. So I, I, I heard a figure that um, I don't know, how true this is, but they could be losing as much as $10,000 on every car they produce. But that's literally the cost to enter the market, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, then, and, and I think there's, there's, there's very few EV companies currently that are actually making money. And I think this is the danger that, you know, are they all able to sustain this, this ongoing loss and keep raising more and more money? There's going to come a point where, that's going to stop, and and that's I think when the consolidation will start taking place. Yeah, yeah we, shall, we shall see. Um, I've got a friend of mine in Australia sent me an email yesterday, and I said I'd read it out on this uh, because he's a new mm -hmm. BYD owner. And so before we finish, let me just read what Roger sent to me yesterday. He's got a, he bought his BYD Atto ATTO in December. He's got a problem with it. Wow, here we go. We've got a problem straight away. When he starts it up, it doesn't make any noise. <laughs> He's not. You know, <laughs> and it's, it takes a bit of getting used to because you don't realize you've actually got power. You can hit the accelerator without realizing you should be going backwards. Mm -hmm. you, you, you boom, boom, boom. <laughs> and so a, there's that. It doesn't feel like his car has started. Uh, and he hasn't, he hasn't driven it much. He's retired and uh, he, he lives part of his life in China and part of his life in Australia. But he's only done 1,500 kilometers. And he has solar panels on his house. So he charges it up at home, plugs it in. He's done this a few times, plugs it in. It takes 10 hours to fully charge. And he says, I don't mind that because we charge it on Sunday when we aren't using it. And so far, he's typically driving his car for free because his, his electricity bill has gone from $2.30 a day to $2.30 a day since he got this car. So he's literally driving this car for free. Is is that your experience as well, Lee? Is that possible for you to charge at home or do you charge it outside? Um, well, the, the apartment complex I live in um, has got an underground parking. I'm on like the, the seventh floor, so I, I can't use a home charger. Right. But our apartment has got numerous chargers installed in, as most apartments are i mean something i would like to say is the the charging infrastructure in china is just like second to none um fernando's probably got the same but we, we've got a like as part of the um, navigation app in the car i can just hit press one button and it'll show me all the charges it'll tell me whether it's a fast charging station it'll tell me how many charging bays there are there and like even like a, a month or so ago we traveled to a very rural area and i looked up on on the thing it says yeah there's some charges here so we, we put that in and, and we drive in there and i'm thinking that this must be wrong there's no way there's going to be charges we're in a very rural town 
And we come around the corner, bam, two big fast charging stations. And I'm like, really? I was like really so surprised. But at, at home, so in my apartment complex, we have the sort of very basic charges. So it takes about seven hours. But that's okay because, again, Fernando's probably got the same. Because electricity is cheaper between midnight and I think it's 6 a.m., we yeah. can actually set on the car not to start charging. So you can plug it in at, say, 6 p.m., but it won't actually start charging until 12 p.m. when right. the electricity is cheaper. So if, if we do that. But what we tend to do is if we go somewhere and we notice when we arrive there, they have a charging station, we just plug it in and go and do our shopping or go and eat at a restaurant and, and just top it up as we go around and um you know a, a lot of people will say that this can damage the battery but i don't buy that if you go battery technology many years ago that would have been the case but the battery management systems are so good nowadays and the battery technology is so better that it isn't a big issue it may have a very small effect but it, it's negligible but you've also got an eight-year warranty on that battery so that's correct yeah so it's um <laughs> you know it, it's not a, a big issue at, at this stage but so far i've been very pleased with the only it's not a negative um but it's something that is is we recently installed a city driving package i'll be interested to to, to know uh, fernando's experience of this but i find it drives a little bit over cautiously i mean people have to remember auto driving is a, a an immensely complex thing it is very very complex so that the car's detecting everything that's going on around it but when we approach like like i give you an issue sometimes you know how these delivery riders they'll come right up to a, a crossing and they'll allow like half of their bike to be on the crossing before they stop that causes issues for the self-driving because the, the self-driving algorithm thinks that bike is going to come out so sometimes it will stop at a crossing where if you were a human driver you wouldn't stop because you'd anticipate you know that bike is not going to come across and then other things like the other day we were driving somewhere and they'd actually got some sort of road works. Um, so the road wasn't what was on the navigation system. It right. went somewhere else. And that could then just confuses the hell out of it. But what happens in that situation, you get a warning and it will tell you to, you need to manually take over. And if you don't, it will just bring the car to a stop. Um, I'd, I'd be interested in, Fernando, is, is that similar to the, the Neo? Um... Look, I've put a hundred, about a hundred thousand kilometers on my car since I got it, January 1st, 2020. Wow. And I use it quite a lot. I use it quite a lot. Um, the, the thing is, if I'm with the trailer, the sensors at the back are constantly oh, sensing yeah. the caravan. So, the beep, 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 so, <laughs> so I just use cruise control. But if I'm yeah. not connected, then I'm used it. I use it quite a lot on highways, right? Mm -hmm. Well, it keeps me in lane. And there's sections that have been plotted, so to speak, by Neo that they 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 actually can plan the route, so they know where the exit is, and it'll actually navigate and drive the car to the exit and actually do that for you. As I was saying, they could do that also for swapping. If you're on a highway that has been plotted by Neo. It will actually exit the highway, get onto the service station, find the mm -hmm. station, the swapping station, park itself, swap, and continue, go on. You don't have to do absolutely anything. Um, I, I, I've used that quite a bit, but where I find it most useful is for traffic jams. You no. Know, yeah, it's, it's amazing, isn't it? Yeah. You just set it on and just like just sit there and not have to worry yeah. about it. For sure, yeah, there's yeah. Always going, there's always going to be someone who's too late for his mother's wedding that is just going to cut off in front of you. Mm -hmm. But I don't know if you got that joke. <laughs> <It's not as> <laughs> <good>. <laughs> I know what you're calling But, but, but in general, it, it's, it's a very, very nice setting. You just set it on mm -hmm. and that's it. It just drives according to the traffic. Mm -hmm. Get past the traffic jam. Okay, you either leave it or, or just mm -hmm. take on. But it's it's one of the most relaxing things, both on highway. It is, yeah, and uh, and uh, in city traffic. Mm -hmm. okay. For, for so sure, yeah. I mean, it's not really a question; it's a statement. Have a look at this because you have experience with this. I know, Fernando, you've been to Qinghai and up to the border of Xinjiang, and you've been through China's most 
remote areas with mm -hmm. your RV. So did you have a trailer with extra batteries? Um, no, what, what Neo does, and I think other companies do this as well, um, is when you want to go to areas where the network is just not there, it's just not built yet, like in Xinjiang and certain areas of Yunnan, what you do is you hire a, a, a van. There's a big van with a generator at the back and you tell them, hey, I, I need a charge. For example, in our case, when we want to go to, to Xinjiang and, oh, we have a stretch of 500 kilometers with the trailer and with the winds in Xinjiang, we probably can only drive like 250 kilometers. So we will need, and the, 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 the computer tells us there's no charges uh, nearby. So you need to get a charge. So the night before, we know we were going to do that. So we talked to the guy uh, from Neo and said, hey, we're going in this direction. Um, can you meet us at this particular service station? But it's something more human. There's a human side to this. You talk to people, you coordinate, they meet you at a safe place. You can't do that by the roadside. You need to go into a service station. And and uh, they they charge you there. It's a little bit slower. It will probably take an hour and a half or something to top you up. But then that's only available in areas where just the infrastructure the infrastructure is not there i have to say that in places like yunnan i found when i started my trip i was concerned about it because it's so mountainous and we're carrying this trailer and whatnot but we found charging towers and charging stations and charging places along the way that were ready to put into place ready to put um to work so this is just it just keeps on growing uh, the the other thing that um takes place is other brands can also use other companies so for example some brands can talk to the to the um, to a different brand because they also have these charging vehicles uh that just makes it possible for you to go to places where the demand for electric cars is not there yet Mm -hmm. um, and the charging station is not there yet, but the tourism is quite big. So that's that's what we did. That's how we experienced it. And and it's quite cheap. You can buy, uh, for example, when you go to Xinjiang, you could buy packages. So 15 chargers for this much. And it's actually similar or cheaper than charging your car at a, at a, at a normal uh, charging mm -hmm. port. But it will take a bit longer. And you need that coordination, but it is what enables you to go to every corner of of, of China. Yeah, yeah. It's that, I, and I I know I've experienced Gansu and Xinjiang on a bike. I can tell you mm -hmm. there are long distances between towns, mm -hmm. and sometimes 180, 200 kilometers between service stations. So I can get that. But I would guess that now I haven't been back to Xinjiang since 2019. I would guess that now there's a lot more. Uh, charging stations. I know that Tesla has built some out there as well. Mm -hmm. So yeah, somebody put up a question. What are the maintenance costs of a, an RV? <laughs> an funny. RV or an EV? Sorry, an EV. Yeah, sorry. What For are the me, I would have to say the thing that I've spent the most is on tires. Mm -hmm. That's because because terrible, though, right? They're very, very special. Oh, no. They're very soft. They're designed for high efficiency. So for whatever reason, I don't know, they're very easy to slash. So okay. I've changed at least five tires in three years, which is not necessary, right? Uh, um, I mean, I've changed it when they're not gone, so to mm. speak. Just when you say slash. five tires, you mean five times or no, a set or five tires? tires. Five oh, individual okay. tires that have been slashed uh, too easily. Very strange. Um, mm -hmm. But other than that, it's just what insurance, brake pads. I don't know. Your car probably has the same Leo, right? The the one the Lee, the the one pedal driving. Yes. As in, you release yes. the you put from the throttle and it starts to regenerate and brake. Um, so that makes it very very convenient. I haven't changed brake pads in three years mm -hmm. and a hundred kilometers. Um, there's no oil change. There's no. <laughs> I mean, it, as far just, as as maintenance out. goes, it sh an EV should be much cheaper than an IC because it's far less complex actually um, mm -hmm. more of the an EV is electronics um, I mean that, that that's the only one thing if, if something like the name 
processor unit was was to fail that would probably be quite expensive to um replace but again buying a new car it comes i, I think the car actually we bought comes with a i think from memory it's a four-year warranty on the car and an eight-year warranty on the battery or a three-year and an eight years something like that so you know you're covered for a, a fair amount of of time um but i think servicing costs it's really just tires and brake pads because there's no lubric oh there's no lubricants as such like a a ICE vehicle um mm. so no dripping you know, oil it, it's a, not at all not at all <laughs> no uh, yeah I, mean, I like fernando's i think i was as two motors we bought this four-wheel drive version but i think fernando has three motors in, in yours right mm. I think I was asked to, but it's still significantly. I mean, it's more powerful than what what you'd ever need. I mean, it it, it it's mm. like you know they all That's quote fun. these naught to a hundred kilometer an hour figures, but really they they're pretty meaningless because they're all way faster than IC most IC vehicles unless you're paying crazy money. You know, I had a BMW three two eight i many years ago, and I thought that was fast. And this <laughs> EV we bought significantly quicker, you know, we're never going to use it. It's just, it's just figures manufacturers like to quote, isn't it? You know, it's, all, all no, but it's uh, nice to smoke, guys. You, you, <laughs> like, you really want to do this? <laughs> <laughs> I've been in Fernando's car when he did that. Holy. And I, I used to yeah, drive I mean, they are fast. these cars around <laughs> London. I can tell you the acceleration on a Rover SDI is nowhere. Compared to what, <laughs> what the hell just happened? Yeah, Kevin just asked a question. Um, th this question: Do you have terrain highway tire, terrain or highway tires? I guess you can get four-wheel drive tires for your. Yeah, you 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 can get anything, but again, as as everything is designed for performance, for efficiency, for right. So you even have mm -hmm. like wheel wheel covers and whatnot to make it more aerodynamic. So most of mm -hmm. these cars sell with. Um, highway uh, tires a yeah. few that are designed specifically for off-road then they would have their off-road tires but you can put anything you want basically um, it's just going to affect your range and, and how quiet it is or yeah but okay, you can put okay. something next. I'd like to ask Fernando actually because he has mm -hmm. our car is relatively new we have the longest journey we've been is like 300 just over 300 kilometers one thing that does concern me um and, and again we've got a pure electric is it's getting stuck in traffic jam I, I, you're probably aware that recently there were there was some horrendous traffic jams um in part of china i mean that, that was extraordinary because it was down to that just concerns me a little bit so what, what's your strategy for, for that do you do you turn your car off or how do you deal uh, with that well, we haven't been stuck in too many traffic jams, but look, I I I, I found um, a measure um, in my in my console in my dashboard mm -hmm. that I find very useful, which is the um, instant consumption, and that allows me to calculate because I'm carrying extra, right? The the car yeah. gives me a range, but it doesn't the car doesn't know that it's pulling sure. <laughs> so much weight, of right? Course, so yeah. the range that it gives me is historical, but is not that accurate. But I, I know that if the car is consuming for I have a, a hundred kilowatt hour battery, right? But mm -hmm. if I'm consuming fifty kilowatt hour, right? I know that I can drive at this speed for two hours. Mm -hmm. Just simple math, right? Simple, very sure. simple calculation. And then based on what speed I'm going, okay, this many hours, I'll make 150, 180. Simple math based on that instant consumption. Um, uh -huh. So as long as I don't, I, I have an interesting video about that when I went to Yunnan in my Are We There? Uh, Are We There? Oh, channel. Watch that. You, you kind of like, you, you calculate a little bit, what's my consumption right now? And where would that take me? Yeah, mm -hmm. um, pu purely, purely just math in your head. Uh, now, if you, the way that I plan my my trips is, I always want to get somewhere with at least a hundred kilometers, at least a hundred yeah. kilometers. However, I found myself like to, today when I went swapping, I arrived here with like thirty kilometers left. Mm -hmm. uh, just a hundred kilometers would allow you to 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 just 
that for my car is about safety margin. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You you give yourself a buffer. Um, in winter, things like that, you you need to be cautious because um, your battery range, your distance will redu be reduced with cold mm -hmm. temperatures. So sometimes when you're in in close to zero or sub zero, then the batteries will drain really really fast. You get used to it. You just change the way you look at your your. Yeah, just a different right? mindset, right? Yeah. yeah. But in in my opinion, just staying above a hundred kilometers or or not chart, not letting the car drain that far, um, it's um, it's the best thing I think. <laughs> yeah, but the reason I ask is it, this summer we're planning to do a road trip, and one of the ideas was we drive from Shenzhen Ati up to Xinjiang, and uh, my big concern yes. is some of those roads. Um, you know, we. Our CLTC is around 500 kilometers, but right now we find we get somewhere between 320 and 380 kilometers um, in real conditions. And that's yeah. concerning me. Um, but I didn't know there were third party um, services where you can get that truck. I didn't know that was available to yeah, to yeah. Well, I mean, users. privately, you can share some information about about how yeah, other people do it. Because yeah. Other people go there. There's tons of EVs out there. Sure. <laughs> uh, but look, I would say that all the way to all the way to Urumqi, right? Mm -hmm. You're set. Yes. You're, you're, you're okay. not having issues. It's when you start going into that. the desert areas of the south. When you start going in places where literally there's nothing, just not mm -hmm. it's a desert area. That's that's when you need to kind of plan and take a look at weather, take a look at um, yeah. um, inclination, right? Because hills also affect that. Um, but But then I'm prudent. I know my car can drive about 600. Mm -hmm. If I'm towing the RV in, in normal conditions, I can do 250, 280. If mm -hmm. it's an incline, I know that that goes to 200. If there's wind, I know that that goes to 180. So I yeah. plan based on my experience um, and the conditions that I'm going to be facing. Sure. Uh, and, and, and the new service has been there for me all the time. This is not a sponsor. Fantastic. <laughs> yeah, the, when you get really, really, really far west of China, you're into Gansu and you go past Jiayuguan. Once you leave Jiayuguan or Jotran, there, there's these two areas, you're really entering into the deserts. I mean, you you mm -hmm. might have passed through a desert. If you come, if you go north and going through uh, Ningxia, you'll go through a small desert, the Tengeli. You go through a touch of the Gobi Desert, but the, your, your, your cities are less than 100 kilometers apart. When you when you get to Jiayuguan, then you're looking at 180, 200 kilometers. You're never going to be looking at 300 plus kilometers between uh, service stations, at mm -hmm. least. So if you're on the G30 or the G312, which are the two roads that go out there, at some stages they actually run parallel with each other. You, you're on one and you you're looking yeah. at the other. So when you're doing that, you know that you're 180 kilometers at most from a service station. You're not. There's another that. trick. There's another oh. trick that we learned in 2020 when we did our Qinghai trip. We just put a, a rooftop tent and we drove for like three weeks to Qinghai. We're just crazy people like that. Um, <laughs> at one point, we I, I was too throttle happy. I'm like, oh, God damn it. We're not going to make it to, to the charger. So we called the people from NEO and they have a database of chargers that are not on maps this is usually for public oh. transportation in the little villages and little cities oh, even in those remote places so so basically they're like look i'm going to send you an address this is the the public charging for the tiny little town buses so they'll allow you to charge there it's an emergency kind of thing oh, that's so, fantastic. so there's, yeah. there's actually uh this was in gansu uh sorry no in Qinghai. there's there's networks that are not on our apps that could be accessed mm -hmm. for for charging that's interesting and and your 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 customer service people will probably be plotted into those yeah. networks and, and be able to help uh -huh. you run into oh, an interesting issue. yeah so, and I, I as i said that the, the infrastructure is expanding quite rapidly you know i'm i'm like shocked at we places i've been to 
that I would have never thought there'd have been a charger there, and yet there is, you know. And, and I thought, wow, funny. you I know. A, I made a short video in Xinjiang, uh, a city that when you type the name of the city in Wikipedia, it just gives you the name in English and in Chinese, and that's it. That's that's how important mm -hmm. the city is. They have taxis that swap batteries. Wow! Which is the taxi swap batteries, the swapping for for there's there's quite a few brands that do swapping, just that nobody's heard of them. But yeah, swapping yeah. makes so much sense for taxis. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. 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 So so there's a lot of taxi brands and companies that actually have this. So we're in the middle of this. Wow! What was the name? Yang Tian, some a very tiny little place in in Xinjiang. We went to charge there, and I'm like, uh, is that car going up? Oh yes. Those are taxis getting swept, uh, yeah. getting battery wow. swept. So it's it's, it's really, Chuan, really it? crazy. Way Sorry? out in the west, Wenchuan. Yes, out probably. In, yeah, yeah. It's it's a hot springs town. It's uh, it, it's where the Olympic team went to do. The, some of the Olympic uh, athletes went to train there. It's very near a ski resort in the mountains. It's just gorgeous there. Wow. Uh, and it's like that. It's it's a place that nobody knows it's there, but it is. Now. <laughs> We're getting to the stage. We're approaching two hours now, which is yes. Really yes. This has been. I, I thought maybe forty. You lied 40 to me. You said minutes. forty minutes. Yeah. I did. <laughs> and this has been fascinating for me, but mm -hmm. I, I do want to wrap it up because I know we all have stuff to for do. For sure. I have one last question for each of you. So let's say Fernando first, because I started with Lee. Fernando first. Mm -hmm. Any regrets? Uh... Anything that you say? I wish this was better. There's only one thing that 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 I wish. Okay, two things that I wish I'd done differently. I, I wish I'd chosen a different leather because I went for something creamy. Uh, uh, yeah. And, and yeah, uh, it hasn't aged that all that well. Like a darker will be better, but that's not a new problem. That's me being an idiot. The other thing is that the, the when the car is cold, it does. Uh, like when you steer the wheel, they're like, eh. it, it gives me a feeling that that's a cheap car. Okay. But I, I don't remember that in, in other cars. So I'm like, it's the only thing that kind of like bothers me, but it doesn't affect performance or anything. It's just my ego. <laughs> you know, like half a million women being like, eh. like <laughs> it's cold. Yeah, I get a bit of that on my bike, but I think it's my knees. <laughs> Lee, any regrets? I mean, yours, yours is only um, a few weeks so Yeah, uh, certainly not at the moment. I mean, the, the crazy thing is I've actually not been able to drive it yet because my temporary Chinese license expired. And the situation gets worse because I'm about to do the test. I can't find my UK license. I haven't used it for, for, for two or three years, and I can't find it. So it may be that I'm now going to have to apply back in the UK to get a new license so that's going to wow. delay things even more but um i have no regrets at all um just going on to fernando's i specifically chose the the dark red leather interior because mm -hmm. the other options were a light tan and a light gray and i knew they would get dirty really easily so that was the the overriding factor my wife would have preferred a lighter color but i says look it's you know we, we've got a young a, a young um my young stepdaughter and and I says, look, it'll get dirty. So we go for the deep red, and and I think that that was great. But I've been I've been absolutely now. Bear in mind, I haven't had a new car for for sort of more than ten years, and I'm just absolutely gobsmacked by the amount of technology in these vehicles. There's just so much, and you know, the, the only downside for me is that the operating system is all in Chinese. It'd be great if mm. I could swap it over to English because there's certain things. That I'm unsure. I, I know how to do a lot of it because I, I just watch Vicky or ask Vicky, but it would be great to have the operating system that I could switch into English to to have a bit more understanding. But that's the only downside for me, really. I guess I, I guess they fought Neil. I fought Neil for two years for that, and finally they did it. But one, oh, really? one last thing. Yeah, they finally did it. OTA over the air mm -hmm. updates. It's mm -hmm. phenomenal when a car oh, it's amazing. can become a better car it is. overnight. 
My yeah. car, for example, and with this I finished, Jerry, sorry. My car got um, a, a system with a with the hydraulics that I can actually lift and go down upon entry, like a Range Rover would do. That's 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 a feature that was sent to me over the air. Yeah, it's like, amazing, isn't it? It's on, fantastic. So no, don't apologize. I'm fascinated by this stuff. This is incredible. Now, yeah. your car is the Harmony OS system, isn't it? That's correct. Yes. Yeah, yeah. it is. Yeah. So it, it integrates seamlessly with a Huawei phone. And actually, um, a lot of it can be controlled from your phone. You can. So Fernando just mentions the uh, over the air update. We recently received one where previously, if you wanted to park, you sat in the car, you selected the parking space, it scans the area, you select the parking space, and it parked. Now, you can you can get out the car. So let's say if it's a tight space and you couldn't open the doors, you can actually get out the car and just park it from the app on your phone. And then you know this this problem in China where you park your car and then you can't find it later because yeah. <laughs> car parks are so huge. Again, the app has like a finder and it will like direct you to where your car is in the car park. So that that saved us a lot of time on a couple of occasions. So just things like this with these modern cars are just great. You know, it's just so convenient to do things like that. It's the thing is just it's just software that is so easy to replicate. It's yeah. very different from 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 making better wheels or making better steel wheels. For it's sure, like yeah. Software once and just so yeah. the mm -hmm. cost of these kind of cars will keep on reducing and and you can For make sure. it better. For yeah. I, right. I think I I think the cost of the cars are because the government keeps subsidi subsidizing them and the EU ought to impose massive tariffs to stop them. <laughs> and the spy cam, the spy cams. <laughs> and the yeah. bike and the burst into flames and or, or yeah. so many things oh, oh, they, they, they can shut all cars down instantly that that That's was the Dino Ramondo thing yeah they so so they, they're really concerned about Teresa going shopping to Tesco's they can shut it down immediately you know it's like it's just ridiculous <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think Gina Raimondo is a bit, uh, she she opened her mouth a little bit too early on that one. It's a smartphone mm -hmm. on wheels. I, I think she said iPhone, but the, 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 the quote is, it's a smartphone on wheels. What does that tell you about smartphones in America? Yeah, what exactly. does it tell you about her fear? Because in China, yeah. people wouldn't think like that. They think this is great. Of course not. In America, they think, "Oh, it's it's monitoring me, it's watching me, it's all these mm -hmm. all these negative things." Yeah. So it's always the uh, same with the West. Yeah, we got we got to almost two hours, and uh, a few people are coming in. Lots of questions there. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. Thanks, Lee. Thanks, Fernando. What incredible insights into new car ownership, new cars, EV cars in China. I think this is possibly. I mean, I've done a lot of really interesting um, live streams, but this <laughs> one for me is the most informative for sure. <laughs> it's so, been great. Thank you. All right. I so enjoyed it a lot. On that happy if note, I could invite people, if I could invite people to watch a, um, a broadcast that is going to start right after we finish this, I would really appreciate it. <laughs> yeah. Click on that he link. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, he was. He was absolutely. <laughs> He was absolutely caught lying, not just once, but three or four different lies in the same sentence. Yeah. Yep. Right. So go watch so that. <laughs> tune into Fernando's. Uh, he, is, this is yours? You're going to put this up? Yeah, yeah. As soon as we finish here, I'll make it public. Okay, <laughs> so click cool. here and go watch, guys. <laughs> I'll be on to watch that. Okay. Now it's time for me to go and have some breakfast because it's nearly lunch. Yeah, me too. Okay. Thanks, Brunch. guys. <laughs> Take Bye. care. And the real art, Stanton, thank you. I'm sorry we, you missed the beginning of that, but it is on live and it is on, it's posted on YouTube now. So thank you, everyone, <laughs> for your time, your patience, your questions, everything else. Bye for now. Brilliant. Bye bye. Take care. We're ending. <laughs> <laughs>